So friends, welcome back to our channel Learn with Gigs. In today's video, I will discuss with you a question which is based on date add and parallel period functions. You would have seen from the title. So I will discuss what kind of question an interviewer can ask to you in the Power BI interviews. Okay. And this question is asked in the Power BI interviews. So that's why I'm making this video for you all. So, so, the, so that you get to know what you have to answer in front of the interviewer. Okay. So let's start. And before that, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe it and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the coming videos as you won't find the videos that I upload on this channel anywhere else on YouTube. Okay, so let's start the video. So as you can see on the screen, we have a year column, a month column and a total sales value column. Okay. And as you can see, uh, in the year we have 2020, the two, two records of 2020, January, February. Similarly in 2021, January, February. Similarly in 2022, January, February. Now, with the help of data at function, if I have to calculate the last year sales in co uh, corresponding to the different months, you know, like for example, uh, for in 2021, the last year sales for January is 100. Similarly, the last year sales for February is 150. So how will you calculate this? With the help of date add function, right? What does the data add function do? So date add func function re basically returns a table that will contain a column column of dates either shifted forward or backward as per the specified number of intervals from the dates in the current context, right? So the specified number of interval will be minus one because we have to go back to one year and the interval will be year, right? So let us create that measure and see what does the date add column give us in the in this table. And we also know that it should give me uh, 150 for January or February in 2021. And in 2022, it should give me uh, 200 and 600 for January and February. So let us create that measure and, le and then we will see how it is, how date add is different from parallel period with the help of this example. Okay. So let me create that measure. Okay. So what I will do, I'll click here new measure and I will create a measure. So I will name the measure as uh, uh, calculate uh, last year month wise sales. Okay. And I will make use of calculate function here. Okay. I will make use of one measure that is total sales, which I have already created. And that is a simple uh, sum of sales value column. And then I will make use of date add period a function. Okay. So date add function. Let me add that. So this is the date add function. So the first column is the dates column. So we'll make use of calendar date. Okay. And then the number of intervals will be minus one and the interval will be year, right? This is how we create a measure to calculate the last year month wise sales, right? So let us see what does the result comes out to be. And then we will see how is it different from parallel period. So let me pull this in this measure in this table. Okay. See, as you can see here, this is what we expected in January. It is hundred. That is, uh, that was in 2020 hundred. Similarly for February, it is 150. So it is showing 150 here. And then similarly for 2021, 200 and 600, right? So our measure is working correctly. And yes, date like data is giving us the correct results. Now, how is it different from parallel period? Because if you go to the parallel period function and see its, uh, uh, uh syntax and all. So you will see that syntax is similar to date add. Okay. And, and it returns a parallel period of dates by the given set of dates by the specified interval, whichever we will give. Okay. Now let us see how is it different from date add by, by modifying the same measure that we have created using parallel period. Okay. So let me click on this last year month sales. And now I will make use of parallel period here. Okay. Parallel period. So this is that function. And let me click on this icon and let's see what does the result comes out to be. Now see what does the result is coming out. See in January, it is coming out to be 250 and in February, it is coming out to be 250 the same. What, what it is, it is the sum of values of January and February in 2020. Okay. Similarly, if you go to 2021, uh, 
200 and 600 is the uh, value right last year sales so to in 2022 it is showing as 600 plus 200 that is 800 800 okay so what does it show so even if uh, the syntax and all are similar to the date add function then also what it will showing it will show the summation of sales for the last year in each month okay in each month of the current year it will show the summation of all the values or all the sales that has happened in the last year so this is the difference between date add and parallel period earlier using date add we were getting the exact sales that happened but now using parallel period we are getting the summation of values and that is the main difference between date add and parallel period i hope it is clear to you now you would be able to answer it in front of the interviewer now okay the the main difference between these two okay now let us proceed with one more question that i have added with this and that is, is this question difference between values and distinct functions this question is also asked and it is quite similar these two functions are quite similar values also uh, return the distinct values of a column and distinct also returns the distinct values of a column then where is the difference between these two the difference is that if suppose if you are using values and the column that you are giving inside the argument part of values if it contains a blank value so it will show as a distinct value whenever you will whenever you will use value function but the same column if you will give inside distinct function the distinct function will ignore the blank okay so this is the main difference between these two and many of us are not aware about this this difference between these two and we just say that yeah these are they are both the both these functions are uh, similar to each other right but no they are not in terms of blank values values will support blank value as a distinct value but distinct function will not support that okay so this is the major difference and that you can tell to the interviewer so this is what i wanted to share with you all i hope uh, you like the explanation and you got the explanation also and if you like it please hit the like button for this video and please share it with all your friends and colleagues whoever are in need of this okay so that's it thank you and stay tuned